Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Around the Dinner Table podcast. I am your host, as always, Nicholas. I guess as always would be weird because it's our first episode, but still, as always, <laughs> I'm Nicholas Clavette. And with me, as always, or will be always, is uh, my dad, uh, Michael Clavette. Hi, everyone. I'm hoping here for a while. Yeah, we'll hopefully. See. <laughs> we hope so. Yeah, you know, I, I do, definitely. That would be yeah. terrible. Um, but uh, we are a weekly podcast. Sorry for the noise. I got things all around me here. I'm trying to clean up. I'm fully prepared. This is the second time we've done this episode because I forgot the sound check yesterday and it sounded like ass. So <laughs> that was my fault. A few technical difficulties. A few. Just a few. <laughs> but today we sound pretty good. Sounds clear at least, so hopefully it stays that way. Um, but yeah, we are a weekly podcast. We uh, usually will do every Wednesday, as you notice. Uh, well, you don't know this because I, unless I tell you, today is Friday and we kind of we had some difficulties. Yeah. But we are, <laughs> but we will also post it every Monday. Yeah, we will do it Monday regardless. I'll get yeah. it out there today, Monday. Sure. If I, it might not be as pretty as they will be in the future once we get our routine, but they will be out there. Uh, we are audio only right now because we are a, literally a two-man operation. And I have all the computers in front of me, and I don't want to deal with video camera. So <laughs> I hate being on camera, and he hates being on camera. So you know it works for works for all of us that way. Um, so well, we've been doing this for a while, but we took a year off because uh, I made a movie. I'm a, also a, a independent filmmaker. Kind of, well, hopefully an independent filmmaker one day. <laughs> yeah. um, but I made my, my first film, my first feature, and I've been doing a lot of uh, editing. Uh, so, and then we can kind of go from there. Probably. Yeah, just go ahead and let's talk about your movie first. and uh, Yeah. Tell that story. I mean, how, how that went. and <laughs> It went well. It, went... <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, like I, uh, I said yesterday, kind of it's weird repeating everything I kind of said yesterday. I guess it'll be a little different, but. Uh, the title of the movie is a simple acts of kindness. It's a nice movie. I don't like horror movies. I didn't have a budget to blow shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you know, but I like to write a nice movie. And sometimes yeah. you have to just write nice. It's like another challenge, right? It's easy to get the the horror independent horror movie out in front of people because sure, sure. they sell, and I get it. And I know my type of movie doesn't. Oh, we sell, but yeah, well, it's a good movie. It is. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm very. We're. we're I'm very proud of it, and uh, the cast and crew who have seen it are very proud of it. They think it's pretty good. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, first time I ever worked with ever ever worked with actors like real actors. You know, no offense to my brother and sister in law and Brandon. You know, um, working with Bahar and Claire and, and Vidal were amazing. It was fun. They were. They they gave such good performances. I said the bathroom scene I talked about yesterday was yeah. It's still like I watch it. It still brings a tear. It's like wow, she they they freaking sold that. Yeah, I mean, they were quite good, you know, and they're all local talent. Yeah, you know, you know, and cheap. It's, <laughs> <laughs> we were all cheap on that one. But um, what what's taken me so long? We filmed it last March, and it took how long to film? Like uh, fifteen days. Fifteen days. Fifteen days. Yeah. yeah. I know that I still, I still have a sound file here, and each yeah. day is it's numbered. Um, but it was yeah, fifteen days, and surprisingly, we just went. I mean, I think there's only two scenes where we did more than three takes. Yeah, because we would do a take, step away, look at it real quick. Yeah, we could do better. You know, do another one. And by the third one, it was like. It's good enough, right? Yeah, it's good enough. You know, because we didn't have. I didn't, didn't have, have a big budget. No, so, no, yeah. But even then, I, I appreciate the budget I had to do it. And that's mm -hmm. that's because of Matthew. The exec, yeah. My brother, Matthew, um, executive producer, and his wife were executive producer. They knew I always wanted to do this. They said, here, go, see what you can do. Yeah. And uh, I think I did good. It looks good. Yeah, I think it looks good, yeah. And good movie. The good story. story. Is, yeah. And... I like I said, I did try to be overly political, but I think there might be a little bit in there. And yeah, it's subtle, but subtle. it's there, yeah. and that's okay. I mean, you got to tell a story, and everything today is political. Yeah, you can't I mean, do I, I, I can go to the bathroom and 
you know, well, you held it with your left hand instead of your right. What are you, some kind of communist? <laughs> you know? That's a good point. You're, you're not know? wrong. It's ridiculous. You know? No, you're not wrong. You know? and, uh, but no, it's uh, it was it was fun. You can see the trailers. There's two trailers up on the YouTube page, uh, Crazy Blue Squirrel YouTube page. And you can always find this podcast there as well. Uh, that's where it'll be. Um, but they're very good. I have a third one on the way. Which is mm-hmm. the one hundred percent finished for the love of Christ, <laughs> <laughs> and Hopefully. everything, everything holy finished. Mm-hmm. Um, the colors are are finally done, and you can see the transformation. You watch the first trailer; it's kind of dark and muddled because I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know if I know what I'm doing. The second one was brighter. You're like, oh, okay, here we go. And then this third one will look like a movie. Like it'll be yeah. to me it'll look like it looks like a movie. Yeah. And I'm the pickiest one out of everybody. Well you had to learn how to do all that stuff and all oh, yeah. the editing and all the sound and the uh well there's a surprising amount of film stuff here in this area. i uh, you know when you started digging into it, I was like, Wow. You know, there there's a lot of not not necessarily movie stuff, but there's a lot of production stuff around. Yeah, there. Someone's got to make those uh, shark cutting. Oh, shark cutting! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those things are hilarious. They're terrible, but they're funny. Yeah, yeah. they're memorable. You know, I yeah. think that well, that stuff will idea. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah, I don't know. And those, all those lawyer commercials. You know, you got somebody's got to make those. And there's like they need to fire the guy <laughs> who makes the uh, the the Morgan and Morgan ones. I'm sorry. I know I probably shouldn't say that, but. Those commercials are awful. Oh, well, they're all awful to me. They just... <laughs> you're making people... It's like... You remember in uh, City Slickers when he plays a bad commercial and the guy goes... Uh, huh? What? We have to pause for a second. Hold on. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that, everybody. We had a quick pause. Hopefully I didn't... No, no, we continued on. Right, well, right. we are literally around the dinner table. We are. There we could are. be some interruptions, some noise, like dogs. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, one sitting to my right right now is Mr. Milo. And vehicles driving by out the window and things yeah, like that. So. You know, and yeah. mom asking questions, which is what happened there. <laughs> she had to ask questions, but <laughs> where were you again? I'm sorry, it threw me off my talking about the movie. Okay. I'm just general. Um, Damn, I hate when that happens. Yeah, no, I got a number one trailer. Um, well, I think you're talking about the talent, Bahar, and uh... oh yeah, they. I uh, said they. Uh, I was surprised how good. I didn't know what to expect. You know, in Arizona, we had that. I, I went to film school in Arizona, and I had a film school talent there, and they were really good. Yeah. You know, and we, we can get back to that one a second because the editing thing comes back to the film school thing, but. Um, so I didn't know what to expect here in Florida, and the people, everybody who put in for the roles was fantastic. But the moment I saw Bahar, I was like, that's Alexis. Absolutely, 100% Alexis, and she's perfect. You know, she's great. And Claire was another one where I was like, hmm, that could be Alexis too. Because uh, originally, there was supposed to be a completely different looking woman for Beth. Completely. Mm-hmm. Older, a little bit more mature, but no one applied. So yeah. I talked to Claire. I said, "Look, you're good. I want to. I would love to use you for Alexa, but Bahar's. She goes, "No, I get it." And I said, "Would you like to be Beth?" She goes, "Well, Beth's supposed to be in her mid thirties and such and such height." And I said, "Look, sometimes you just got to go with what you can get, and I think you're going to do great. You'll do great." Mm-hmm. And she did. She came and she killed it. I mean, yeah, you know, I never really job. thought that she was too young for the role. And, no, and she I mean, played it. Doesn't matter. And she played it beautifully, and she did great. Yeah, it's good. Oh, she's fantastic. Both of them were fantastic to work with on that. And they did great. And then Vidal came in. Um, he's from South Florida, mm-hmm. near Tampa, or just south of Tampa. I don't know exactly. He'll probably shoot me a message if he hears this. And, yeah. You know, no, 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 it's here. Like, oh, my bad. <laughs> you know, like, he's a, a great guy. And he uh, was put out, I, I need a guy. It's really only one day. I can't pay a whole lot. He sent me, he says, hey, it's your pal Vidal. I'll, I'll do it and i looked i said who the hell is this guy so i looked at his picture <laughs> and i went you know yeah he'll be perfect because he's actual the really actually the right age and everything for that character mm-hmm. in the script you know i don't usually put like ethnicities and stuff for scripts you know when you're independent you get what you get kind of thing but 
but I have an idea in my head what right. I want right. each character to look like. And I said, um, Bahar was dead on. Uh, Claire filled in and did it beautifully. She was amazing. And but all just came right in. I was like, thank goodness, you know. And we only had three actors in the whole movie. And, but, but the story's written to that really yeah. all you need. Yeah. I mean, you had some extras. You had my feet in there. Yeah, your feet. <laughs> uh, their feet, mom's feet, Milo. And yes. Carlos, oh, the fourth actor, and it is Mr. Carlos. Carlos the dog, yeah. Yeah, our RIP. He passed away, unfortunately. He was an old man. But easiest actor I ever worked with because yeah. I could just, Carlos lay there. And he's like, I am. <laughs> 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 you just look at me like, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> you know, and just lay back down. You know, a little bit of attitude. You don't, know? <laughs> don't bother me. Yeah. Don't bother me. But uh, I love it. Once, the one scene I left it in is where um, Claire pets him. And, he, and she walks away. He looks up at her like, hey, what are you doing? You know, like, <laughs> that's really cute. I didn't tell you to stop. I didn't tell you to stop. Oh, he did. Oh, damn it. You know? But um, it was it was fun. I had a great time doing it. And working with Tony, who there's only six people full time made this movie. Well, realistically, five people full time made this movie. And then Vidal for the one day. He was the last day of shooting. So he shot. He was in really two scenes, but there's three angles to those scenes. No, he's actually in three scenes with three angles almost to each one. And then we did, you know, up to three takes of each one. So he did all of that in one day. One day, yeah. And both the uh, actresses were there that whole day, too. So well, they were pretty much there all the time because they would just help out. Like, mm -hmm. if they weren't in the scene, just help out. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, when it was just him and, and Claire, Bahar was helping out on the back with uh, Tommy. And, you know, because Tommy was our production assistant. She pretty much was the everything that me and Tony were not doing. Mm -hmm. So, she did script supervising. Someone lost the line. She just yelled it out, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know how Tommy is. She just yelled, yeah. blurred it. Yeah. That's not it. Like, oh, damn. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta be quieter. Oh, sorry. You know, <laughs> but she did great. She she was fantastic, and um, couldn't have made it without her. The one day we didn't have her was the day from hell. And like, yeah. and then Tony looked at me and goes, "Can you get Tommy back for tomorrow?" I said, <laughs> yeah. "Yes, yes, we're gonna get Tommy back for tomorrow." She had a thing to do today. It was it was awful. It was just me and Tony and Bahar and Claire, and I was doing sound. I was doing directing. You know, I was also script supervisor. So I had a script in front of me holding the stick, like, like trying to get it over them to where they can hear them correctly. It was just a nightmare. And then at the same time, pay attention to make sure it looks right. And that, was a, that was not a fun day. And then yeah. Tony had his big camera in front of him the whole time, so he couldn't really help me out much. You yeah. know, he's, he's yeah. filming the damn thing. So, but it was it was great. And, you know, Tommy was fantastic. She loves filming her home. Mm-hmm. That whole, Beth's whole house, and that's Tommy's house. <laughs> um, and then um, the other house is my buddy John and Kate. They let us film there, too. Their poor kids lost their uh, spring vacation last year because of this. Yeah. So <laughs> they had to go to work with mom. You know, and they were not pleased. <laughs> and then they saw the movie, and they're like, this is not the kind of movie we are into. No, I'm no, like, you're no. Seven I'm and, sure, yeah. You're seven and nine. Yeah. I mean, I understand. <laughs> yeah, they're probably bored to tears. And, we... Yeah gave up our spring for cage vacation for this yeah. <laughs> actually they thought it was cool that it, we made a movie I'm like holy shit yeah did that you know there are, that's not what they said but you know i think teddy's like you made that you know like, yeah wow <laughs> you know yeah. so. it's kind of just neat to do it but i don't get what's going on but it's neat that you did it you know and uh but uh, it was a lot of fun and, and i loved it and from a storytelling thing you know it's i kind of put all the things i like to do in movies in it I like, there's scenes where there's just no talking. It's just story. Mm -hmm. There's just things happening. The story's being told through what's going on. Yeah. I love sure. nonverbal storytelling. It's my favorite. I'm that nerd who watches old silent movies on yeah. YouTube. I love it. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world. I made one. Uh, that one that's yeah. on there. Yeah. yeah. Vacation is a silent mm -hmm. movie. And it's good. You know, mm -hmm. I, you tell the story. Yeah. You know, I love to do that. And I use that in the beginning. Yeah, I showed the, I had a meeting with, the, we had a meeting with our financial advisor a couple of days ago, and I I knew his father very well. We worked together for 15 years, mm -hmm. 
and uh and he reminds me so much of his father i loved his father he was a great guy so i said hey you know my son made a movie you need to check this out you know and uh and he watched the trailer and he's like yeah you send me an email when that movie comes out and tell me where i can find it because i want to see it yeah so uh he he thought it was really uh really good well, that's good that, that does that yeah does. That hits the feels oh yeah it, it sure. does. yeah and he, he's a smart guy he's a good guy yeah well hopefully he'll be out soon so that's the next thing i'm looking at um aggregation or um I, there's a, still that part of me i would like to do a film festival one mm -hmm. if i can get one but you know the problem the next one i know i could get into is until like november i don't really want to wait that long yeah really. so Long it might end up going to an aggregate which is fine i, I have no problems with that because I, I i'm at the point now where i want people to see it oh sure i want to get eyes on it so if it ends up on uh what they call a, a vod ad video on demand mm -hmm. that's fine like, people are going to see it like i said it's really good i'm really proud of it i think the casting crew seems to be all proud of it so sure we're gonna move it forward and Get it out there. I'll let everybody know. Let's see if it goes to Tubi. You'll get a thing saying it's on Tubi. If it goes to this, uh, what other thing, I'll let everybody know. Um, my, my hope is like Amazon kind of picks it up because they're huge. Tubi's big too. Tubi's really big. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. But they don't do as much independent anymore. Amazon kind of does. But um, but most aggregators will make it available to be buy or rent on Apple, Amazon, uh, Google. So I've been stuck behind a computer for a year. I'm glad to not be behind it and place behind a microphone doing yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. It's been a lot of fun. And hopefully we can continue these and make them entertaining. Yeah, that's a, that's the goal here. So, <laughs> Excuse um, me. While you were working, I was not. So, sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no, we, uh, we did some traveling last year. We went back to France to visit Matt and Jam, your mom and I. And we spent almost two weeks there. I think it was two weeks total, but you know, you lose a day going and coming back because it's such a long trip, but you know, trips to Europe are usually overnight. So, you know, you leave here in the afternoon and you get there the next morning. So, but anyway, we, uh, we spent about, I think it was eight days in Caen is how the French pronounce it. I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's, we, we pronounce it can, not cans. There's a difference in uh con yeah i thought we pronounced it con, con. I yeah called so i'm con, sorry yeah. con and uh in english i guess it's con which is in normandy area uh city of about a hundred thousand people beautiful beautiful city you know they got a castle there that was built in 1100 by william the conqueror you know i mean it's an amazing place and uh so we spent about eight days there i think Touring all over that area. We went back to the American Cemetery in Normandy. I had been there already once, and we took your mom up there. Yeah, that's kind of amazing. I think if you have an opportunity, every American needs to do that. Uh, the D-Day beaches and all of that, it, it's really, really something to see. And then uh, traveling around Caen, and we went to a little town called Bayou, a small city actually. It was one of the first cities uh, liberated, liber liberated by the British, uh, actually on D-Day. Hmm. And it was so easy to liberate because the Germans saw what was coming and said, we're out. <laughs> they just <Makes> left. <laughs> you know, so, and it saved the city. It, you know, it saved all of the architecture, all the buildings and stuff. And that is one beautiful little place, man. It is awesome. So uh, we went there and we went to a fine arts museum there and we just toured around the city it was a great time we had a wonderful time good food nice people you know you always hear these things about the french yeah and it's pure bs and those are the nicest people they're kind they're helpful um and they know how to cook and the champagne is good and the wine is good the beer eh, i'm still not quite there on the on their beer but they're getting better they got a lot of local breweries there and stuff so they're getting better and then we went to Paris. We took a train uh, into Paris and spent four nights, about three and a half days, and completely exhausted ourselves in that beautiful city. That, that is my favorite city in the world. There's so much to see and do there. And, and around every corner is something to see. You know, you were there. Mm -hmm. You know how, oh, yeah. how beautiful it's that place is. Oh, my God. My favorite city. Yeah. And uh, we went to the Louvre, Le Louvre. 
Mm -hmm. Saw the uh, Mona Lisa. Yay. <laughs> I wouldn't waste my time to do that again. Mona but Mona Lisa is really not that big. <laughs> yeah, it's really not that big. And there's just hundreds and hundreds of people waiting in line to see that thing. And uh, But we did the Louvre. We did a guided. We, we hired a guide. Actually, we bought a ticket that had a guide. And, uh, boy, I would recommend that. If you go to France and you want to go to Louvre, get a guided tour. And we were there at least four hours, maybe longer. Ooh. And we probably saw a tenth of that place. It yeah, is it's freaking huge. And, uh, but having a knowledgeable guide there, you know, uh, you cut the lines, you don't have to wait in line. You know, they're all time tickets. So you might get a ticket that says you have to be there at one ten in the afternoon. You better be there because if you miss it, you're, you're not getting in, you know, but with this, ticket you know the guy says meet me here at this place at this time and you just met up with him he had the tickets he walked us in you know we didn't have to wait in any lines or anything like that and, and that's the way to do it and he explained everything you know that the louvre was a castle hmm. back in uh napoleon's time and uh he told us where the moat was where are you walking now is where the moat was and this is the drawbridge and you know and it was just oh such an amazing an amazing afternoon. That was the last day we were there, and mm. we were so tired at the end of that. Yeah, couldn't even see straight, you know. But uh, we had also gone to the Palace of Versailles. Mm. I think we did that the day before, and uh, that's worth going to. But it's kind of a long trip. You got to take a couple of different trains and stuff to get there, and uh, and uh, we didn't hire a guide for that one, and I wish we would have. So if I ever went back, which I don't know if I would, but once it was enough for me, but uh, I would definitely get a guide and guide us through there because we're walking through this place and there's a there's a TV show on now on, is it on Apple? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah Franklin, right? Ben Franklin. And a lot of it's filmed there. It has to be filmed there because it's, I was like, hey, whoa, that's precise. <laughs> you know, yeah, when it came up on screen. It's a little too perfect. <laughs> a little too perfect. Anyway, it's a really good show. Yeah, I recommend that. And uh, the Palace of Versailles is prominent in it because it's, it was that time, you know, when the, and uh, it was beautiful. But I uh, love, love France. We got back from there and we were just exhausted. We did nothing for quite a little while, <laughs> you know. And then we went to uh, Canada. We went up to uh, Prince Edward Island. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is a beautiful place. Highly, highly recommend that too. Uh, Prince Edward Island is beautiful, wonderful people. Yeah, again, good food. Mm -hmm. You know, French fries and gravy, my favorite Canadian food. <laughs> I just love that stuff. Poutine. Poutine. You know, uh, yeah. So uh, we did that. And we, uh, sadly, at the end of it, we got COVID. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we couldn't fly home right away. We had to wait until we, you know, get all the, through all the COVID protocol thing before we get on an airplane and go home. So we had, had to extend our trip a few days, and uh, the which is fine. I you know I have no agenda, but we couldn't really go anywhere either. So we're just and it rained every freaking day. So we're just sitting there watching it rain and doing nothing and getting bored. And but so it was good to get home. But it was a wonderful trip, and I'd really like to go back there someday. Oh yeah. And uh, then last fall we did another trip up north for a few days just to investigate some stuff and then nice. came home so that's pretty much my year you yeah. know other than that taking care of stuff around here yeah you know day to day my usual routine so. well good well uh we're gonna do our ending segment because it does it will take a few minutes because our government keeps adding since we were supposed to do this two days ago they've added things <laughs> sense i kept my same one i, I kept you kept your same one yeah. I, i'm gonna add one because okay. it's too funny yeah Actually, I'm going to use that one first. Go ahead. <laughs> Fire away. <laughs> Georgia. Really. I don't know what district. You guys really need to sit down and think about your priorities in life. I'm just going to be honest. I know you're going to get mad at me, but I don't care. Because you have a congresswoman who wants to get space lasers and put them on the border to zap illegals. Because apparently illegals are not humans, but that's beside the point. She wants to zap people with space lasers. And apparently she thinks Israel has space lasers and wants us to use their space lasers. 
Yeah, she's crazy. That... All I can ask is what the fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's so, out there. I don't know why she gets so much press. I don't even. I mean, I she... guess because she's crazy. I mean, they, they yeah. oh, look at this. Look what she's doing today. Look at this lady. <laughs> I mean, she was on, it was at, um, she gave an interview to one of them. Can't remember what it was, but during the interview, finally the interviewer was just like, okay. They just yeah, moved on. Moved on. Yeah, like, we got to go now. Yeah. She said something about, yeah, all Democrats are pedophile cannibals and all this stuff. And she and he looks at her and goes, the woman looks at her and goes, do you know what that means? I'm not a pedophile and I'm not a cannibal. I don't think you know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, I got one. Uh, it's a little complex in a way, but uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was impeached by our wonderfully efficient Congress. That's not the one that, that was one of the okay. first things. <laughs> that's probably the first thing that they actually accomplished, yeah. which they impeached him for, you know, according to the Constitution, which they probably have never read, when you impeach a government official, it's for high crimes and misdemeanors, right? Mm -hmm. This guy hadn't committed any high crimes or misdemeanors. He's trying to enforce bad laws on the border. Yeah. Maybe. You know, could the Biden administration do a better job on the border? Yeah, probably. Yeah, but you so know, could Donald Trump. But so could have Trump. And so, you know, I mean, there was people coming across the border illegally when he was president. Yeah, to Obama before him. Oh, and sure. Bush before him. I mean, it yeah. goes back. The long but place. we have never fixed our immigration process. No. So, you know, it's a, it's a mess. I mean, I we have a guy across the street who was a small businessman. Who, you know, I can tell you stories about him trying to hire people that are legal and just, yeah, but, but I won't go there today because that's too long a story. No. But anyway, um, so along with that, you've heard about the Boeing thing and the 737 max and doors flying off that thing and planes crashing and all that. Well, Boeing has some real serious quality problems and that's because their leadership is more worried about their profits than building quality airplanes that are safe for people yeah. to fly on, especially the 737 MAX. That, that's the big one there, but it's others too. Mm -hmm. And uh, being, uh, I spent my whole adult life in aviation, so I kind of know a little bit about this stuff. And there's a really good uh, video on, help me out here. Uh, Wendover? Wendover. Yeah, he does. About the whole Boeing one. thing, yeah. which is really good, better than what I could ever put together. And about their quality problems and, uh, it's worth watching. Yeah, you know, the one thing I found interesting is Boeing bought McDonnell Douglas. Yes. But that is the McDonnell Douglas leadership that runs Boeing. Yeah. So the same sort of. guys who broke McDonnell Douglas. Yeah, well, sort of. Are now. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's really weird. Yeah. It's, and it's they strange. they really have some big problems. Yeah. So to bring all this together, there was a hearing earlier this week or late last week in the Senate about the, they pulled the Boeing people on the carpet. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's a quote from Senator Ron Johnson, Republican of Wisconsin. And I'm sure he said this in a very, you know, more than troubling. The testimony was more than troubling. You know how those guys talk. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you he said, Congress, yeah, they shake your fist. <laughs> Congress has to get to the bottom of this. So what did they do to get to the bottom of this? They cut the hearing short so they could go to the impeachment trial for Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Who did nothing wrong. <laughs> Who did nothing wrong, and, did, and they let him off the hook anyway. Yeah. The, the whole thing was over in like two hours. But they had to cut this very important hearing short for this thing that we really need, need to get to the bottom of so we can play games with this guy because I'm a Republican and he's a Democrat, and <laughs> we, we cannot have, possibly work cannot together. Have yeah. Can't have that. So, so there you go. There's your government at work. Yeah, well, yeah that's another point yeah. of mine, too. You know, how many people, how many senators and congressmen are in Washington? 500 and whatever. I'll bet 400 of them don't know how an airplane flies. No, not. So I they're going to get to the bottom of it? How yeah. about getting some people in there that know what the hell they're talking about? And how about fixing the FAA? Because you guys are the ones that are letting the FAA, telling the FAA that it's okay for these companies to self-regulate. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, the fox watching the hen house kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing that, FAA. We're doing that. We got this covered. Here's the paperwork. You know, of course, they made it all oh, up. Yeah. It's just like, you know, the, I the mean, FDA come on. And the, and, and, you know, give me a break here. That. How about 
putting the FAA back in charge of aviation safety, which is what they're supposed to do in the first place, yes. and, uh, and fix it. But they're never going to fix it. So uh, good luck flying on Boeing aircraft. But yeah, I'm a little, little. Actually, as an air, aviation guy, I can tell you, it's there's there. The chances of an airplane crashing are slim to none. I mean, yeah, you know, it's uh, they're complicated machines, but. And my my last one, which we talked about yesterday, which is just kind of for humor sake, for the humor. This is what you get for being a racist. Uh, the governor of South Dakota, oh yeah, is not allowed <laughs> in ten percent of her own state because it is owned by the Native Americans in their their tribal lands, and she essentially said that they are the tribal lands are working with the Mexican cartels to bring drugs into the country. There's no South Dakota on the border. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Apparently they're working. According to her, they work with and the reason their children are falling back in school is because they're bad parents. And she wonders why I don't understand why they kicked me out of their told me not to ever come on their lands. <laughs> like it's, you're an idiot. And you said something pretty horrible and you have no proof. And I'm, it's kind of getting to the point where people just say shit and therefore it is true because it was said by the right person on their side of the argument. And she has the right to say it, which she said. <laughs> but they totally had the right to tell her, get her the to, hell out. You yeah, know? And that is a separate country. Those, they are. Those places are, there's you a know. Wendover video about that, too. Oh, yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah, a country inside a country. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I got for for this week. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, we'll end it on a, on a good note. I'll end it on a good note. I have a quote for you from yeah. Frank Zappa, oh, yeah. my favorite uh, people in the world, the late. Great Frank Zappa. Really? Yes. Some of his movies, was, music was weird, but oh, he's fantastic. But he was quite an artful guy. He said, uh, "Art is making something out of nothing and selling it." Yes. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> and <laughs> apparently, there's such thing as space lasers. Yeah, All right, everybody, have a wonderful week, and we will talk to you next week. Thanks for uh, listening. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. Yeah. Share. And, uh, communicate with us if you got something to say yeah. or if you don't agree with us on something. You, know, you can always. Or, you know, if you don't like us, that. we don't care. <laughs> you know, we probably are. <laughs> if we're annoying, yeah, maybe we are a little bit, but we do it because it's fun. It's fun for us. So if you enjoy it, stick with us. If not, well, okay, I'm sorry. But <laughs> have a nice one. We will talk to you later. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye.